Hey, what's up all you art geeks out there today? We're going to talk a little bit about finding new colors with your artwork. This is something that I obsess about constantly. I'm always bouncing from blues to reds to greens to purples to yellows, everything in between because I get bored using the same colors all the time. So we're going to talk about that. And to help me along with this little discussion, I am going to talk to ChatGPT and see what it thinks on this subject. Now, before we get into that, I want to let you know that today we're watching a painting process that happened over on my Patreon account. This was a tutorial that lasted a couple hours. So go over to my Patreon account if you want to learn more about my oil painting process. You also get some great art downloads monthly from there. So check that out now. Let's go ahead and get back to the subject at hand. All right, so like usual, I went ahead and asked ChatGPT how to find new colors with your artwork. Very simple question. But ChatGPT, it didn't fail and it gave me 10 different points to go through. So we'll see what it's got for us here. It could have some good points. It could have some bad points. Usually one out of 10 is what it's averaging for bad points or points that I maybe disagree with a little bit. But let's go through these now. Before we get into the first point, it does say here that exploring new colors with your artwork can be an exciting and creative process. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to help you find new colors and expand your artistic palette. Okay, well, that was a good start. So what is the first point? Let's see what it says here. It says, analyze your current palette. Now for me, I don't usually analyze my palette too much. I have the same 10 or 11 colors. It's an impressionistic style of palette that many artists use that can cover 90, 95, maybe more than 95% of the whole color spectrum. I've been using it now for about 15 years, I think, with some slight variations over the years, but pretty much at its core, I've been using these same 10, 11 colors for quite a long time, and that gives me everything I need. But the way I analyze my current palette is not by looking at what I'm using for colors, it's by looking at the colors I have on my previous paintings. So when I look at my paintings, say the last 10 paintings, I try to decide which colors I really haven't focused on that much. And that will really help me decide what my next painting is gonna be. Because I like to jump from primary color to primary color to different secondary colors, I don't like to repeat myself too much. If I see that my last 10 paintings have a bunch of reds, I'll make sure to avoid reds. But if I haven't seen any blues for a while, I'll make sure that my next couple paintings really focus on different variations of blue. So that's how I like to go about it. But that was a good point by Chad GPT. Let's go ahead and jump to the second one here. The next one is research color theory. Okay, well, this is something I definitely did very early on. This is one of those foundational things that you need to understand before you get too far ahead with your art career. You need to understand color theory. You need to understand color mixing. You need to understand the basic principles of color theory, complementary colors, analogous colors, triadic colors, split complementary colors. There's so many different ways to create a pleasing painting by adding certain colors together. But a lot of the basic principles will funnel down to this general idea that you can't have every single color in each painting. You can't have a rainbow of strong colors bouncing all over the place in your painting. Some have to take the back seat. Some need to be the star and some need to be accents. There's a lot of different ways to go about this, but just know that throwing every color under the rainbow into your paintings is usually not the way to go. All right, number three is sounding quite a bit like number two, experiment with color harmonies. It says here, choose a color harmony scheme like complementary or analogous and experiment with variations of those colors. So we kind of already talked about this. I would say this complements number two in a lot of ways. It's very similar. These could almost be lumped together into one point. But as you're researching color theory, you should be experimenting with these different color harmonies that I mentioned before. The ideas of analogous, complementary, split complementary colors, triadic. All these are different things to research, but also experiment with. So number two, number three, let's combine those into one. All right, number four is use a color wheel. And this kind of goes with number two and three. Could this be lumped in with those? I guess it could be, but ChatGPT decided this was worth its own point. And I think it could be worth its own point. Uh, the color wheel is one of those things that when I was first starting, I always had the color wheel sitting up on my wall or somewhere nearby to really help me get my mind in order as far as what colors I wanted to use. And it wasn't until a few years went by that I started getting that thing out of my way and started understanding colors 
uh, within my own mind without having to look at it as much. Now, when I do tutorials, I like to pull it out to show people how to use the color wheel to understand color mixing. It's so important for color mixing that if you don't understand the color wheel, if you don't have a general idea of what the color wheel looks like in your mind at all times, you are not quite there yet as far as being able to color mix on your own. Okay, number five. Number five is draw inspiration from nature. Now, when I think of nature, I think of a lot of earthy colors. I think greens and browns. Of course, the sky is out there, a nice bright blue sky. But for me, a lot of my inspiration for those subtle colors comes from those earth tones that we see in nature. So when I'm trying to think of subtle colors, I'm trying to think of combinations of colors. I'm always thinking of, okay, what can be the star color? What can really pop? What can be a really strong primary or secondary color? And what earth tones can I use to complement with that? So I'll have that grisaille style painting base, and then I'll add colors that maybe aren't so much part of nature, those really bright reds and blues and yellows and greens, or colors you might see in flowers. That's one of those great places to find some color inspiration for your work. All right, number six. This one's pretty interesting because I really don't get into this a lot, but it says explore cultural references. And then it says different cultures have unique color associations and palettes, explore artwork, textiles, and designs from diverse cultures to discover new color combinations and meanings. I'll have to admit, I've never done this before. This is a great idea. I'm sure there has been a time that I've looked at other artwork that has been from other cultures, but not really looking at it for that reason. So I think this is one I'm gonna have to start doing myself because this really could open up a lot of interesting color combinations that I've never even thought of before. So. ChatGPT, thank you. You actually really gave me something to think about after this little discussion. I'm going to use this one later on. All right, number seven is experiment with digital tools. I love this one. This is something I do all the time. I will start every painting usually with a photo from my library photos. I have thousands and thousands of photos that I can look through and I'll just pick one that looks good in the moment. I'll bring it into Photoshop and I'll start cropping it and I will start playing with colors. I love using the color balance tool in Photoshop. It's one of the best tools to really give me quick ideas on color combinations. There's so many different ways to use it too. Uh, even on my Patreon page, I create a custom artwork for my patrons that can only be downloaded there where I'm testing certain things out with Patreon using one of my previous paintings. So I'll take a painting that I've already completed, it's already done, I'll bring it into Photoshop and I will change the colors just to see what could have been with that painting. So that's another way I use it. But when I'm actually creating a painting, like I said, I will crop it and then I'll play with the colors and then I will use that for my basis for the starting point of my painting. Now, it always tends to veer off in its own direction later on once I actually start painting. The Photoshop reference I have is purely for reference. It's never something I hold myself to, but it's a place to start. So I love using digital to get some ideas. I will also use this little program for my Android phone called Artflow. Really great. It's not quite as good as Procreate for iPhones and iPads, but it does a good job of letting you explore uh, different colors and different ideas with an existing piece of artwork. So I'll be halfway through a painting, I'll take a photo of it, and then maybe in the morning when I'm waking up, I'll turn on my phone, take a look at that photo and bring it into Artflow and just play with some different color ideas, start painting over top of it to see what ideas I can come up with using uh, that digital tool. So Photoshop, Artflow, Procreate, I'd say about my top three. I think Photoshop has their own app now. I haven't used it yet, but it looks promising. So check that one out as well. All right, number eight is try unconventional combinations. I do try this all the time. This is just like I mentioned, when I am creating a Patreon exclusive download, I will use an existing painting and I'll shift it around in Photoshop just to see if there's some unconventional colors that I would never even think of that could work for that painting but I'll also take my initial image, bring it into Photoshop and try some things out. I will also try it while I'm painting, but when you're trying things like that out in the painting process and you don't like it, you do end up wasting some paint. So I would suggest that you go a lot smaller for those kinds of paintings. That's what I do when I'm trying something new with some new sort of color palette. 
I like to use a smaller painting surface so I'm not wasting a ton of paint. So using unconventional combinations, there's a good chance they won't work out, but just don't do anything big. Don't go huge on something you've never done before. Again, Photoshop's a great way to test it. Artflow, Procreate, great programs to test these unconventional combinations of colors. All right, number nine, this is always one that ChatGPT will throw in there when I ask it an art-related question, and that is seek feedback. Agreed. You got to get some feedback from artists, though. Don't go to your family and friends. They'll love anything you do. You'll never hear anything honest from them. But if you're doing something that just doesn't look that great, find some artists. Try to get a group together. That's what I have. I have a group of artists. We have a monthly meetup where we do critiques and we look at each other's art and we say, hey, that looks terrible. Those colors are awful. We try to be as honest as possible. What I would suggest is that you specifically ask people, do you like the colors? And tell them to be honest. That's the only way you're going to get an honest answer. Just don't be too sensitive with the answers, okay? That's the best way to get good criticism is to let people know they can tell you anything. And this can really help. But don't listen to all the advice, even from artists. They may not know what you're going for. But if you hear it from every artist, say you ask 10 artists, they all say they don't like those colors, then that's probably a pretty good sign that you need to do some changing with your color combinations. All right, and finally, I know a lot of artists that like to do this one. ChatGPT put down, keep a color journal. And I know plenty of artists that do this. They'll take some paint swatches and put them into a little journal, a little book, uh, somewhere to kind of keep an eye on colors they like to use together. For me personally, I don't do this. I like to consider my old paintings my journal because for me, that just seems like the best and easiest way to keep a journal is just to make sure I take photos of all my work and then I can always scroll through them on my computer and then I can decide which painting colors work, which didn't work, maybe some I want to revisit and maybe alter a little bit. But seeing those colors in the final piece, I feel is the best way to keep a color journal. All right, that was all 10, I think. ChatGPT, you did a good job, great work. Now looking back at these 10 points, I think the one piece of advice I would have for you is don't stick with the same colors over and over and over again. There are some great color combinations out there. Feel free to do 20 paintings with the same palette of colors if you want. That way you can get really good with that color combination. But always try subtle variations if you want to. Maybe you want to be one of those artists that's just known for certain colors for a series. Then for the next series of paintings, you can try a whole new set of colors. But some people may get bored seeing the same colors over and over again. Now, if your subject matter is so intense, so amazing that you could use the same colors all the time, you could use black and white, every single painting because the subject matter of your paintings is so cool. Maybe you don't need to worry about colors. Maybe you're just fine keeping with those same sets of colors. There's a couple artists I know of off the top of my head that have been using very similar colors for years and years and I never get bored of their work. So it's really up to you. But for me, I get bored using the same colors. So see if you like embracing many different color palettes when you're creating work. Maybe it's something that you can do just as a challenge to yourself to find different mix of colors. I remember when I was first starting, I did a series of 36 broken coffee mugs uh, with different color palettes just to see how many different color palettes I could find. And that became an invaluable tool to me. All right. Now, as I mentioned before, I have a Patreon account, lots of tutorials on there for you to check out, art downloads as well. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe and like all that junk that you got to do on YouTube. I have an Instagram account that I upload to daily. Thank you so much again for checking out another one of my videos, all you art geeks out there. I will talk to you again very soon. Bye.